Hey, it's Jazz and this is Wildlife Matters. In the Philippines, Palawan is home to many rare and endemic species, a lot of which have seen the terrors of the illegal wildlife trade. The Philippine pangolin, or Palawan pangolin, commonly known as balintong, is one of the eight species of pangolins we have in the world. But you can say that the Philippine pangolin is one of the rarest because it's endemic to Palawan and has the smallest geographical range you can find it in. But what is a pangolin? Well, pangolins are mammals. Very interesting mammals at that because they are the only mammals who are completely covered in scales. These scales protect themselves from predators, so whenever they feel threatened, they just curl up in a ball and use their scales to defend themselves. Kind of like a shield, very similar to what armadillos do. These guys feed on mostly insects like termites and larvae. And they eat just like anteaters, wherein they pick up food with their sticky tongues. And that's actually why people sometimes call them scaly anteaters. But because of that, we know that they play an important role in the ecosystem as pest controllers. Can you imagine a world without pangolins? I mean, there would just be an overpopulation of pests like termites, all of them disturbing our lives. Pangolins can grow up to four feet and are harmless creatures really. I mean, against us humans, they're defenseless. And sadly, during these past few decades, they also gained another title, which is that they are the world's most trafficked mammal. Among the eight species of pangolins, four of them can be found in Asia. And while only four of them are listed as critically endangered, all of them are threatened and are facing population declines because of the illegal wildlife trade. In my country, the Philippines, the penalties for poaching pangolins can range up to 12 years of imprisonment and the fine can reach up to 1 million pesos. But with poor enforcement, the trade still continues, especially because there's such a high demand for these animals in countries like China and Vietnam, where their meat is used for delicacies and their scales for traditional medicine or folk remedies. In the IUCN Red List, the Philippine pangolin is considered as critically endangered. Yet another amazing species only found in the Philippines that is nearly going extinct. To give you more of an eye-opener about how bad the illegal trade is, let me give you some facts given to us by Sir Emerson C., who is a herpetologist with research interests in the illegal wildlife trade, famously known for his research focusing on pangolins. Listen to this. In the last two decades, around 895,000 pangolins were trafficked from Asia and Africa. And over these two decades, they documented around 7,634 Philippine pangolins that were confiscated from the illegal trade. Let's break that down a little bit more. In the year 2000 to 2017, 740 Philippine pangolins were confiscated. And they also confiscated over 10 tons of frozen Sunda pangolin from a ship that crashed in Tubataha Reef that carried around 2,800 pangolins. Can you believe that? In 2018 to 2019, they had 10 seizures and 18 incidents of retrieval. So these pangolins were confiscated by the time that they've already gotten so far from their homes. Now that combined with the previous seizures led to a total of 6,894 pangolins. And to add to that, these 18 incidents happened during their biggest seizure in 2019, wherein 1,154.31 kilograms of pangolin scales were found 600 kilometers away from their natural habitat. Now listen, I don't mean to overwhelm you with all this information, but this just proves to show that all these poachers and traffickers are able to easily get so far as even to travel from Palawan to Manila before they even get caught. And the saddest part is, even after their rescue, out of all those 18 pangolins, only four of them survived the rehabilitation. The rest died. You know, the illegal wildlife trade is really stressful for these animals, not just because of the conditions they kept in, but also because of how uncomfortable they are and how they end up dying before they even get to where they're supposed to be. And a lot of them are also contracting and passing down diseases with the other animals that are in whatever mode of transportation they're kept in. Just imagine all the casualties from the illegal wildlife trade. That's a lot. And lately, it was found that the demand for pangolins is not just in China and Vietnam anymore, but even in the Philippines. They discovered that in places like Manila, Paranaque, Pasay, and Makati, at least five restaurants have been serving pangolin off their menu. 
All you have to do is pre-order it and they'll serve it to you. We also have a lot of traditional Chinese medicine stores. And in a lot of those stores, especially here in Manila, they were able to find medicine being sold from China that actually contains pangolin in them. It's so bad. But what about this year? Have things gotten better? Well, in the first quarter of 2020, 20 pangolins were confiscated from a trafficker in Palawan, as well as three more retrieval incidents. It just proves to show that pangolins are facing an ongoing battle. The fact that we have people like Emerson C who are monitoring the trade of these innocent creatures means that we still have heroes who are fighting to give pangolins their freedom back. And we also need to do our part. Like I always say, education is the first step. Let's keep talking about pangolins and let's make sure that we never engage in buying anything from the illegal wildlife trade. Whether it be exotic pets or medicine or whatever, let's not buy from the illegal trade at all. And remember to also report to authorities if ever you suspect any wildlife trafficking going on. Remember that eating wild animals like pangolins is what brought us to this COVID pandemic in the first place. So to protect them, is to also protect us from ever having another pandemic again. And let's urge our government to keep fighting for these animals. Let's urge them to protect our biodiversity. And during the next elections, let's make sure that we vote for the officials who will care about protecting our wildlife. As long as we still have even the very few pangolins left, the battle isn't over. We have to be their voice. Because remember, every piece of wildlife matters.